Hey, how's it going out there today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. I'm your host, Cash. This is Weekly Recap. Let's talk about it a little bit. What is Weekly Recap? I'm going to tell you about my operation. I've operated a semi here in the United States of America. I got a fuel efficient operation. I got a 2016 Cascadia. I try to save as much fuel as possible because that's profits. I work on my truck as much as possible. As you can see here, we're dirty. We're fixing to go in and take a shower, get all cleaned up and good to go. But here's what we're going to talk about today. Weekly recap, I'm going to talk about the week. I don't talk about my carrier. I'm leased onto an 80-20 split carrier, refrigerated freight. If it's not refrigerated, I'll tell you about it. I like to go from Minnesota where I live out and right back to Minnesota, preferably. It's the way I like to do it. Not always working like that, but it's how I like to do it. Sometimes I go back, I churn, I burn, I grab another one, I go back out. But most of the time, I like to just get it, go out, come back, stay home a couple of days and get, you know, just rhythm, just getting a little rhythm there. So let's talk about what we did this week in this load. Good week for me. Not a great revenue, not an out of this park revenue, but very profitable, very profitable. You know, if you're the guy that sells the oranges down by the uh, interstate, this would be a good one to compare it to, you know, because I know y'all killing it selling them oranges down by the freeway exits. So here it is. All right. I did a two pick. Six drop. Yeah. You like that? You like that? Okay, so here's the deal. It started out as a one pick, five drop. They called me the night before the load. I was at the house on this. They called me and said, hey, uh, they're going to add another stop, another pick, and another delivery. And I was thinking, uh, don't don't go busting my cherry load up. You know, I mean, this was a cherry load. So it was supposed to have been 17,000 pounds. One pick, five drops. They changed the whole game up. Two picks, six drops, 39,000 pounds. So they added one pickup. The first pickup ended up being the last delivery. And so I had to carry that extra 22,000 pounds the whole darn way. It's it's just the market right now, you know, like they love busting up a cherry load right now, you know. Uh, but I was, get, I was glad to get it because it's good money. It made for a good week for me. Took six days to get this done. I picked this up on a Friday, finished it up on a Thursday. Uh, technically should have been done Wednesday night. Had some problems. Hang around to the end. We'll get to that. I want to tell you a little story about my boys over at Capstone Logistics. I, you're going to love this one. Uh, but that's that's a little problem we ended up with there because Capstone. Um, the load was negative 10 degrees, 39,000 pounds, paid $6,000 after they added that extra stop to it, plus all the detention that got added on because of everything else. I had to make an it Turned out actually to be two picks, seven drops, because I had to go to the dang food bank at the end and deliver two pallets to the food bank uh, donation style. So I don't ever complain about those, but... When, they, when I do it, I try to make a big deal about it to the broker. That way I get a little money out of it. It tends to work out in my favor. So let's talk about it. Um, I got it all done. It was bing bam. Ten empty miles. Love that. Ten empty miles from the yard to the pickup was ten miles, the first pickup. Uh, 14.54 on the loaded miles, Minnesota to uh, West Virginia, and then basically Ever damn city in Virginia had a delivery, it felt like. I went from the north side of Virginia all the way down to the bottom side and then had to come back up some. So, whew. Uh, but anyway, good load, good load. 1,464 total miles on that, and that was the week. Um, now, I picked up another load, but that'll be on next week because I don't, I don't play no games with weekly recap. Weekly recap is exactly what it is. It's one week. I don't do no nine days. I could have I could have stretched this out to ten days and just blew your mind with the amount of money, but that's not how we do it. You know, to me that comes across comes across over time as disingenuous when people do that. They try to fluff their numbers to get the views, but eventually, uh, what are views when nobody watches? Right in the future, you'll get no views. So my trick is to be honest every time you can, and eventually your channel will grow. If you're a YouTuber out there, remember that. Don't worry about what she's doing today. Just keep putting in the work, being honest, and and, and, and and they'll come to you. You'll find your audience, okay? It'll come to you, I promise. So I got into, before we get into the numbers, I want to tell you this little capstone story. So I'm at the final stop, okay? The very final stop. 
and it's capstone at the final stop. And I go, they give me the paperwork. I'm looking at the paperwork. I'm like, uh, they, they, they say, what's this? So I go out and I look on the trailer. Yeah, 34 cases on the trailer. I get in the trailer. You know, broker wants pictures of it. He wants pictures of the paperwork. He wants a description of the product. He wants a count on the product. Typical stuff. If you're in reefer and you have overages, you've known all this stuff. Pictures of, you know, labels and all that. Uh, so I'm taking pictures of it all, and I notice, well, uh, the numbers don't match. So I go back in, and I tell my boys at Capstone, I say, hey, Capstone, I said, uh, how about this? You've obviously marked the paperwork wrong versus what's on the trailer. I said, and they, they told me to pull out of the door and drive around to the office. So I'm already out of the door at this point, little, little uh, context. I said, I can back back in that door if y'all want to recount this, okay? It was about a 1,000 cases. But it shouldn't take long to count a thousand cases because they're ten boxes per layer. So basically, all they would have to do is go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, boom, next pallet. You know, we could have done this in five minutes. The manager of Capstone, I comes over. I says, "Y'all want to recount this?" He says, he looks at me right now and he says, he says, "We're not recounting because we don't make mistakes." Capstone don't make mistakes. I, I nearly fell down laughing. I mean, I laughed right in his face. I was thinking to myself, have you have you never heard of Capstone Logistics? I know you live in a bubble, but I don't, okay? I deal with Capstone all the time, and no, no disrespect to the hardworking people that work for Capstone, but everybody makes mistakes. Everybody. So, He's all, you know, he's all big league in me. And I said, well, hey, how about this then? I said, I tell you what. I said, if you're not going to go back and change what it says, I at least need you to mark 34 cases of the actual product it is. Because I can't turn in this paperwork saying it's short 34 cases of product A when you were really over 34 cases of product B. Okay. So I said, well, you marked it wrong on the paperwork. And when he looked at it, he goes, oh, I guess it is. I said, I took the perfect opportunity. I said, oh, so someone does make mistakes. And, you know, I was just getting red with him at one point. Like, you know, hey, come on, man. I'm trying to get out of here. Help me out. He says to me, he says, okay. So he marks it down 34 over on product B. And then he goes to walk away. And I said, hang on a second, buddy. I said, now we got another problem. You didn't mark out the overages on product A. And I've only got 34 cases on that trailer, but you now it looks like there's 68 cases uh, over. So he says to me, well, you've already pulled out of the door, so I can't be responsible for what's on that trailer. Capstone. They got to be the mafia. I swear to God, if Capstone is not ran or owned by the mafia, I mean, because you look at it like this, okay? The mafia at least has the FBI breathing down their neck. Who's breathing down Capstone's neck? Nobody. They got it made. They're, they got the perfect scenario, those Capstone guys. So, anyway, I'm done with that, okay? So, I just have to tell the broker. I said, "Hey, here's what we're here's what we're over. Here's the deal." I told the broker about Capstone telling me that they don't make mistakes, and I swear to God, me and the broker laughed on the phone for ten minutes. Fat boy laughing, just like wheezing and laughing, and like, "Oh, I can't catch my breath." You know, I was fanning myself like an old lady. You know, he was like, ten times a day, I deal with a Capstone goof up, and he goes, "I guarantee you, if they recount those cases." They're not over. They're they're probably messed up somewhere else and don't even realize it yet. I said, hey, well, you know, whatever, man. I said, we got to do what we got to do because I got another pickup. So we ended up taking it down to Virginia, um, Richmond, Virginia, uh, the Virginia Food Bank down there. Uh, really nice place, really nice people. If you ever get a chance to deliver something down there, take it to them. Uh, they do a good job down there. And uh, on the delivery before that, get this, at PFG, before that delivery, I show up with 20 cases of product A on the paperwork. It says quantity ordered, 20 cases. Quantity shipped, 20 cases. 
I pull out of the door, there's 15 cases on my trailer. I go back in. I say, what's up with those 15 cases on the trailer? Old girl says, uh, we don't want them. And I said, well, what's wrong with them? We don't want them. I said, you ordered them, didn't you? She said, yeah, we ordered them, but we don't want them. So now it's my problem to deal with 15 cases uh, of Italian beef. You know, I <laughs> just like, yeah, can, 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 can a driver catch a break every now and again? But, uh, you know, I, I don't try to get too worked up in those situations. I just laughed. I was like, and she took the paperwork. She marked the 20 out and wrote a five under it and initialed it. And I was like, what does that even mean? Like, does, do your suppliers really let you get away with that? Like, that would be perfect. Imagine if you went into Love's, okay, or any truck stop. You went into the truck stop and you said, I need 50 gallons of diesel, okay? So they, they pump 50 gallons of diesel into your tank, and then you go in and say, no, I only wanted 10. It's already here. It's already in the tank. What are we doing? <laughs> weird load. The whole load was weird. I had one stop out in BFE. Uh, let me see. That was Virginia. Out in Virginia where they unloaded a pallet of frozen meat with a John Deere tractor. I'm not even playing. I think it was like a family barbecue. I drove out into the middle of nowhere into a gravel lot. And old boy said, yeah, just pull into the gravel lot. I'll be there in a little while. I pull into the gravel lot. You know, I'm like, what is this? He pulls up in a John Deere tractor and's like, all right, we'll get it. And I was like, I don't care. It was on the back of the trailer. You know, they'd put that pallet on the back. I guess they had arranged all this. But I was like, this should have been delivered to U.S. Foods or Cisco or Reinhardt. And they should have brought this out to y'all. I shouldn't be out here. But anyway. That's the week. Let's talk about the money of the week. Let's talk about uh, $6,000 revenue, 4800 my 80% of that. All miles, 1464 all miles, 10 empty miles, 1454 loaded miles. Puts me in at $4.10 all miles, 328 a mile, my 80%, 328 for me a mile, and 413 a loaded mile. Uh, so damn good paying load, but boy, the hassle of it. That's one of those right there. That's a reefer load right there. If you ain't got the patience for that right there, for every damn stop to be weird and, and last minute them adding stuff to the trailer, and if you ain't got the patience and the nerve for all that, then by all means, reefer ain't for you. You know what I mean? I'm really good at letting stuff slide. You know, I, I can I can just let it be cool to a certain point, you know. But if you can't, stay away from reefer. It'll make you old real quick worrying about stuff. Uh, but there we go. Diesel, 622 on diesel for the week. Not bad at all. 268 on reefer. There was the money. Uh, all those, you know, negative 10 degrees. It was fairly warm. It was fairly humid. Sitting with the doors open pretty much all day, backed into a dock. Um, $38 on death fluid. $20 on parking for that load. I did pay for a parking spot one night and $32 in tolls. So there you go. 32 on tolls. 980 total variable calls for the week. We bring over my 4,800. We subtract out the $980 in variable cost. That leaves me 3820. 3820. I took 300 to the maintenance account. That left me 3520. Okay. Uh, that's the type of weeks I like, you know, I drove 1500 miles and $3,500 left to do what I got to do with, you know, we're talking after variable expenses, you know, we're talking two bucks a mile right there. 42 cents a mile on diesel, diesel, I've cut my idle time way down with my zero breeze, which is running right now. If you guys don't know, go check out those videos I did on those zero breeze. Just put in cash is king, zero breeze. Check that out. Really nice stuff. But that's the week, guys. Uh, just a trying little week. You know, not a lot of work. Just dealing with the hassles. That's what this week was. It was it was just getting my balls broke for six days straight. Really seven days because they called me the night before to start the breaking of the balls. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I take them every week, honestly. I take that every week. Yeah, just, you know. 
a lot of logistics, a lot of figuring it out, a lot of, uh, you know, trying to find a place to park, doing two or three deliveries a day. But I, all in all, my type of load, my type of load. I like it. I'll take it. Um, you know, maybe we can get more of them, hopefully. But that's it, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you could, smash the like button if you made it this far. If you find value in these videos, become a subscriber. Red button down there. Everybody knows how to do it by this point, I hope. Click on that. Set your notifications. You'll get notified anytime I put out a video. I much appreciate you guys watching and building this community with me. We're all in this together, as they said, during uh, the C-word disease that happened a couple years ago. We're all in this together, okay? Um, so... Thanks, everybody, for watching. Be careful out there. Take care of one another. Remember, people are more important than trucking. Quick, I just want to remind everybody about the Mudflap app. If you're not using Mudflap, check it out. Download it. It should be part of your fueling program. It's a free app. Go download it from the Apple or Android store. You sign up using credit card or bank account. No credit checks, nothing like that. No fuel card needed. Get yourself huge discounts on fuel. I buy about half of my fuel through it right now. It's an amazing free app. It's 100% legit. Sign up using my promo code there, and I'll get $10 in free fuel. You'll get $10 in free fuel. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.